This might be a little aggressive, but uh, let's do it, man. Two reps, maybe a singy, maybe a zero E. We're gonna find out, maybe a little. You guys just hear that train? There's actually a train outside. If you can't hear it, I'm not going crazy, but that, that's gotta be a good omen, right? The train's coming through. Let's go, come on. Come on. Woo. Better than I thought. We're gonna end on a win. The train came through. Let's go hit some accessories. Woo. Uh, YouTube, we are back. Apologies on last week. Just a total crapshoot in general. Lack of training, um, lots of BP sessions. Um, swing was feeling good, but we return, is it with our shield? We return with our shield? We return on our shield, right? We, we return with our shield or on our shield? We returned on our shield this weekend. Uh, a pretty tough, tough weekend of softball for personally and, and as a team. We had a kind of our season opener. Um, Swing was just feeling off, and the whole, whole week was just kind of feeling off, which wasn't enough focus. Not the swing-wise, but like it was training was kind of off, nutrition was a little bit off. We had a bunch of dentist work last week. It was, everything was just kind of a hodgepodge last week. The only thing that was really feeling consistent was BP in the swings, but I think deep down I kind of knew everything was kind of off. I kind of half-assed last week. I kind of was all over the place with the dentistry work and just struggled at the plate last week. I struggled at the plate on Saturday. Our team struggled. Um, try to pride myself in being like a leader uh, on the team. And uh, the team was struggling and I was struggling. It was tough for me to, uh, to pull our team out of it. So hopefully we bounce back this week. We're just gonna focus up. We're gonna have a little bit more of a laser focus this week. Um, home run swing is feeling amazing. Home run swing is feeling great. That's about the only swing I got my confidence in. I'm kind of becoming, I was talking to Kyle, one of my coaches for softball, is kind of becoming everything I hate in softball where the dude that just can stroke the home run ball. Um, but we're, we've been playing on these smaller fields and just, there's something psychologically that is not clicking in, in hitting my spots. And I'm trying to hit the perfect swing at the perfect spot rather than just doing, just doing a job, just putting the ball where I need to put it. So a little bit of a struggle week. Um, those weeks are really important. They kind of tell you a lot. They kind of focus you up. They kind of tell you, okay. And then these are weeks that I really love training wise because when I'm struggling at the plate, I'm not fucking I'm not thinking about anything strength conditioning wise, I'm not thinking about anything really practice wise. It's all about in the moment, what is your struggle? What, what are you not doing? What do you need to do better? Um, and honestly, for me, a big part of it is just swinging at good pitches. Like as crazy as that is in softball, it makes a big difference. Um, if I swing at low outside pitches, I'm hitting home runs that I shouldn't hit. That's one of my struggles, just like putting too many balls over the fence. Like swing at the balls that are chest height so you can drive through them and keep them in a line drive rather than hit the home run ball when you're dipping and kind of sending it. So um, what pitches are you hitting? Uh, what's your focus when you're hitting those pitches? In, in certain situations, are you hitting the right ball at the right time? And, and all of those small things have nothing to do with all of this stuff, right? And, and I think a lot of that can definitely be expanded to standing at the free throw line, right? Um, you're trying to hit the game winner in basketball. I'm just thinking about basketball. So I was watching the T-Wolves dominate last night. Um, all of those things. So it's like, what are the actual important things? How do you fix those in the morning and at moments? And I think all of these things kind of add up and are one conglomerate. It's like, okay, your training was off and, and you do have a little bit of self-doubt in your preparation for the week. Um, but the specific issues have nothing to do with training, if that makes sense. It all just kind of compounds. So there's a lot going on this week. We're going to bounce back. That's, that's also part of it too. Um, thinking fast and slow. And in a, in a lot of the books that I've read, it's uh, at some sometimes there's just the luck aspect, right? Um, there was probably five hits of mine that most of the time are going to be hits, right? Just line drive hits, gap shots, good spot that you did it, um, and the other team made a play, right? Um, and this is this statistical analysis here is when a tournament, if, if you have those five hits, and let's say, I think it was two weekends ago, I had a, probably five or six of those hits where every single one of them was actually a hit, right? So then I'm feeling all great about myself. My average is amazing um, because all five of those landed, right? And then I have a weekend where all five of those, same, same exact ball, same exact spot, the player just made a better play on the ball. Um, now your average is bad, right? So I think a lot of it's just finding your own average um, and not even batting average, finding just your own like when is luck helping you? When is luck hurting you? When is the randomness helping you? When is it hurting you? And just kind of staying on the thread and not just getting too down on yourself. Just, and I think film's a big part of that. that. That's really helpful for me. I think if I had left this weekend without filming a lot of the stuff that I filmed, I would have struggled in not knowing what the issue was. Um, 
but I go back and look and it's like, okay, you, you have four or five of those hits that are the same as your normal hits that are great. Um, don't really have to change much other than maybe slight spots, um, but like that's a good hit ball. Continue to do that. At the end of the day, 70% of the time, those balls are going to land, and that's an amazing hit. Um, and then 30%, you just can't get down on yourself. And then the rest of the times that you're swinging, it's nothing to do with like mechanics or anything like that. You're just swinging at bad pitches and bad moments, right? So um, able to get some data points there from the actual game and look at what we need to fix and just cleaning up the other aspects of life. But we are back here. Um, one thing I want to mention before we start training because this is a question that I get a lot, is I fell off uh, training last week. I only got two days out of my four days. Um, do I need to start over the program? I'm kind of freaking out. Uh, can we bump everything back? Can we, uh, can we change it up? I, I, I missed a week of the workouts. And it's like the best thing to do when you, when you are scrambled, when you are messed up in the workout, when, when, you got, when you got caught up with life or you fell behind in training, just start over, dude. Just, just like... Start the next week. If you're on a three-week program, right, and week two was a total crapshoot for you, just start week three on day one, right? I, it's so, many, so many people give themselves so much anxiety, um, and it's honestly, it, they, there's more damage done in the stress that they have over the week of training that they messed up, over the week of training that they only got two days in, and the week of training that they were super busy in. There's more stress around those moments than the actual like actually just missing a week of training like missing a singular week of training in the grand scheme of things is absolutely nothing right um messing up the next four or five weeks because you're stressed over that one week that you missed and being neurotic about that one week that you missed and trying to throw too much into the next week and this is what a lot of people do they'll throw so much into week three they'll try to do two weeks at once or they'll try to just catch up because they missed a week or they'll go way harder than they need to and then either they're burnt out or they mess themselves up for week four and now we got week four all jacked up then they feel guilty week five week five they go really really hard week six is jacked up right it's so much better just to be consistent right so you messed up week two Okay, deep breath, nothing, there's no issue there, right? In the grand schemes of things, one week that you messed up, no big deal, start over in the next week. Don't worry about that week. Don't, don't try to make it up. Don't try to do anything with it. Just hit week three, right? And a good program will allow you to do that. Um, and this is not a plug for the Oakham Strength. It's nothing. Like any good program will allow you to miss a week and hop back right on the train. And there's, there's no reason that that week is the building block for week three, whatever, man. It's just... The body doesn't work that way, right? Week three, start over, and we're ripping again, man. And full intensity week three, and full intensity week four, and we just continually be able to build up. You, you mess up week six because life happens and you get busy, man. Then week seven, just start back over on week seven and you're okay. Um, and I think a lot of athletes and a lot of coaches and a lot of just trainees in general, just a little bit more of a deep breath with, with their program. Your program's alive just like you're alive. Your program should be able to adapt with your busy, schedules with, with life, right? I'm not encouraging you to just continually skip weeks, but I just know a lot of people, and I get this message a lot, where they have vacation or they, they have something with work and they miss a week and they stress themselves out and do more damage with the stress and do more damage with the makeup than just starting over and being all right with, okay, this is my vacay week, I'm gonna take this week off or just gonna be okay with this and next week we're just gonna get back on the train, right? And again, a good program should allow you to do that. Good program should be alive in the way that you are alive, okay? So we're gonna rip upper body day today um, and we're gonna get back on the train. Let's go. All right, we got specialty bar. Two rep max, if you have never benched on a camber bar, you have never actually benched because this mother trucker, man, man handles you. Um, I've seen so many athletes that have a 315 plus bench sitting here wobbling with 135. I love benching with the camber bar. I think it works, that hand and wrist and the stability there. Um, I think if you have elbow issues when you bench and shoulder issues when you bench, um, it's weird, but having more of that wobbly bar almost forces the stabilizer to work again. This is bro science, but it feels like the stabilizers work just a little bit more, so you have to be a little bit more cognizant of your descent and your bar path, um, and a lot of athletes actually feel better when they're doing that. Um, obviously, that's not an end-all, be-all solution there. Um, I know in a lot of neutral grip bars, honestly, don't feel better on the shoulders for a lot of athletes. It almost keeps them more rounded, um, and honestly, for the most part, I usually go buffalo bar or cambered bar for an athlete that really struggles with shoulder issues, um, and we'll bring them back out. I think a neutral grip bar sometimes is a little bit more placebo than anything. Neutral grip, the, the buffalo bar, the duffalo bar, I think it's, no, not the duffalo bar. What is the, 
the Kabuki bar, Kabuki bar, where it has that curve that we benched with at um, Tim Rallies. I think that's a nice solution because it allows a little bit more range of motion, allows those shoulders to actually move. I think the traditional just neutral grip bars, I think it kind of jams your shoulders up a lot for a lot of athletes. Anyways, that's a lot of bro sides. But got the camber bar here, um, squeezing that bar, benching it up. We got two rep maxes this week. Um, again, kind of all jacked up on the schedule because last week was kind of a gross training schedule with the dentistry work, but we're back on. Here we go. Let's go. I think I'm going to hit a couple sets straight here on the bar. Um, all the accessories we've done, we only got one more set there, and I want to kind of save that after I warm up a little bit more with the bench or hit a couple more stimulating sets. So maybe this set and one more set, and then we'll go finish the last set of the accessories. We got some rotations and some good stuff. I, there's there's uh, two exercises here in the accessories that uh, I think will make for good content, but even more than that, I, I, I just really enjoy the exercise themselves. So um, two more sets here, and then we'll go record those. Let's rip it. Just like that. All right, keep adding weight. Let's go. I think that's something worth noting too is um, my bad week. And again, this is not a excuse for having a bad week. I'm at a level where last week is a bad week for me. But again, kind of on the topic of make your bad weeks other people's good weeks, right? So we still got three good training stimuluses in last week. Um, two good upper bodies, one lower body, and then we got another sprint and jump day in where we didn't get a ton of lifting done. Um, so four kind of training sessions, we were BPing every single day um, and we're getting some sprinting reps in in the outfield um, at those BP sessions and um, in the game. But like we were still getting training stimulus in, it wasn't like you were a total bum, right? So I think that's a really good metric of is your program alive and, and do you have a lifestyle that, that kind of fits to where your bad weeks are what other people's good weeks are. Like if most people are getting three to four training stimuluses at all in, um, that's a really good week for them. So that's just something to kind of think about in the athlete kind of setting is I think sometimes we get a little bit misconstrued with what a good week is and what a bad week is. That's a bad week considered for me. Um, and especially where I want to take it again. Those are, those are goal specifics um, and, and the content that I wanted to produce, right? So I, wasn't very, I didn't get a ton of good camera work done last week. I didn't get a ton of uh, Instagram content done last week. Whole week was just, I'm telling you, that laughing gas just destroyed my brain. Um, and this is from Mr. Mushroom himself. But um, yeah, I, I just think, I thought that was kind of a cool thought process too. I was just thinking back to last week. We still got three good training sessions in and then one sprint session in and jump session in and then a bunch of BP after that. So still a ton of work to be done and still not at the level that I want to take it, but that's something to, um, to think about with your, with your own training and your own kind of life. I think a lot of trainers get kind of messed up in not realizing they are one percenters of one percenters in the fitness world. And I think that that's, this is not like a hold your hand, everything's all amazing. Like I think you should be a one percenter of a one percenter. That's an amazing goal. But I think it kind of creates these fairy tale things where we, we put up posts that just are not real life for most people. Um, and ideally we make them one percenters, right? We, ideally we make that real life for most people. But I don't think you get there by not understanding that it's not real life, not understanding that last week is a ridiculous training stimulus for most people. Um, so I just want to, for people that are watching, realize like I was still getting training sessions in, still had the time to be able to do that, was blessed enough to have the time to be able to do that, just not at the level that I want to take it and different goals for different people, right? Not really sure where I was going with that rant, but we got two more reps. Let's go. Man, that bar, if you mess that bar up, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a nasty day. Um, I don't, ever, I, I don't know if I've ever seen, I know there is people that do it obviously, but a 315 bench on a camber bar would be absolutely nasty. Um, and either I'm gonna train myself to do it or train one of my athletes to be able to do that, because that would be sick. But continue to grip, I'm going to, I can't even remember what I told you now, but I'm gonna show you the accessories now and we'll go from here. So this, this little move here, we got the pad out because we were eating shit on it and it's much harder than I thought it was going to be. So it's just a push up 360 all the way around. Um, I'm not amazing at getting my, uh, my big old lower body involved in my plyo push-ups. You know some of the dudes, they can like throw their hips with their hands when they do the plyo push-ups, kind of a little cheat code when they do it. Um, not super great at this, but our goal is to be here and flip over in a 360, land there. It's not gonna be the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but these were harder and cooler than I thought they were gonna be. I like these. Because so I'm gonna start higher, I'm gonna show you a little variation, and we'll continue to work our way down. Oof, see, full cheat code there. Uh, I might have to put my hair up here. 
Try head on backwards here. A little bit lower. Oof! There we go. A little contact prep. We're gonna call this contact prep every time we eat shit with the ground. Here we go. Oh, that was dumb. I slipped on my foot. All right, come on. Here we go. Oof. There we go. We're going to count that. Nice. Those are fun. Those are a uh, little learning process that we're working on today. Um, again, not going to be the prettiest thing in the world, but I like those little movement problems challenges. Again, when you keep the stimulus, the stimulus, the goal is contact with the ground with that upper body, have a little bit of a upper body power exercise, plyometric exercise, right? So that's the goal. You can play around with that goal however you want. Create a little movement challenger, add that 360, add a little roll, right? We're still getting contact, we're still getting presses off the ground. And uh, next week, we want to get a little bit more specific, maybe you can do a super cat variation, right? But again, once the stimulus is set, how you play around with that stimulus, free to be creative, right? And if you are a boring, automatic, robotic type lifter, you can keep the same stimulus over and over again. I just know a lot of athletes are not that person um, and they get stuck with coaches that are that person. And uh, the robot coach can't disconnect the, the oh, it's, this is the stimulus. They can't, they can't disconnect that from the emotions and the, the interest levels of an athlete, right? Um, we were doing these this morning. We had athletes do these for like 20 minutes. They're super engaged in it. And um, if I had 12 weeks of a super cat programmed, right? They're, they're just not going to do, like by week four, they're going to want to not do super cats again. I got to censor myself on here. I almost say stuff that I shouldn't say, but um, they're going to not want to do super cats and the intent is just going to be butt cheeks. I add this in for one week and then we do super cats the next week or like a big depth drop plyo push up. We're going to get intent there. So that's, that's the reason, right, that we're doing it. Still getting good stimulus with high interest levels and um, creating better movers. That's our whole goal, right? Let's hit some rotational stuff. Keep going. Got the Wilbur Tells here. Um, he's gonna love that we call him Wilbur Tells because he loves rotational power so much. But we got the stick here. We're going side to side. Your first set of these, you're gonna unlock new parts of your back. It's gonna crack, it's gonna feel amazing. Uh, we're going six seconds as fast as possible one way, then we go six seconds as fast as possible the other way. Here, just like this. Just like that, then we'll go the other way. Just like that. Woo! All right. Every time we do those, feel fucking fired up. Ready to go. Let's, uh, we got one more accessory. Should have did that one last, but we'll do one more accessory. Then we'll hit our bench, finish up our bench here. So let's go. Then last accessory here, last uh, superset we got with this. We're going to go. Really like this exercise. It's going to be the keeper exercise of the day. When we get a good video editor, we should do like a montage where it's like flashes. Keeper exercise of the day. Oh, we're a yapper today. We're going hands on the back of the head. We're going to bend towards the heel that is down, feeling that stretch, then we're coming back up. This one feels like money in that hip right there. You get a little bit of spine bending in on this one too, but just pinning, ooh, that hip down. We're coming this way. We got six of these. Ooh, boom. All right, other leg, let's go. Let's feel like money. I think I might have got these from me, um, movement through medicine. I'm not really sure. Can't really remember where I saw these. Maybe I had a, maybe I had a dream about them probably stole them from somebody, but these are, these are gas. Oh, there you go. All right, back to bench. Let's get it. All right, that was set. Another day, another dollar, another bomb. Let's go. Oof, come on. Oh, wow, that got heavy quick. Oh my God, we almost got buried underneath that. Oh, goodness. We almost had a fail on the live bench stream here. Um, and that would have been cuff to, uh, to cut and make, make a rep, man. We would have had to do some serious video editing there. Um, one more set, we'll do some slingshots. I didn't think that was gonna be um, as brutal it is as, as that was. Um, that sticking point is nasty. Again, with that, with that bar, you misgroove that, that's why you kind of have to like pause, make sure it's set, and then drive back up. Woo, that one felt good. Um, good chest stimulus there. Um, I think the bar is 85, so what do we got here? Two, 25, two, oh my God, 
I'm doing math like some of these high schoolers, bro. Like just on a normal barbell, when they ask me questions about how much the weight is, I just want to go insane. But with the specialty bar, you got 245 plus, I feel like 285 uh, on that bar with the, with the wiggle. That's not bad. It's not a terrible day. Um, we'll add a uh, slingshot. We'll hit probably add fives to that and uh, see how the slingshot goes, see how the slingshot helps. And um, then we'll hit some accessories. Feeling good today, though. Let's go. Good day to be back. Last set was a near-death experience. We'll see how this is with the slingshot. I don't think I've ever done a cambered bar bench with the slingshot. Um, so maybe it helps. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you see me die on camera. Hopefully not. But let's see what happens. Here we go. Two reps. Oof. Oof. All right, one more set there. Man, loading up the wrist with that thick bar. That's tough. I got feel like I just have little baby wrists sometimes. Um, let's add maybe like a 10. Let's add a 10 and then uh, hit the accessories from there. Let's go. This might be a little aggressive, but uh, let's do it, man. Two reps, maybe a singy, maybe a zero E. We're gonna find out, maybe a little. You guys just hear that train? There's actually a train outside if you can't hear it. I'm not going crazy, but that, that's gotta be a good omen, right? The train's coming through. Let's go, come on. Better than I thought. We're gonna end on a win. The train came through. Let's go hit some accessories. Woo! Then we got heavy, easy bar, bent over rows, ripping these here. I think there's something to be said just about rowing and picking up things that are heavy, right? Doesn't matter the implement, just change up the implement, pick up and row something heavy. Doesn't have to all be sport specific and super scientific. Some of it can be, um, some of it there can be nuance, but I, I just believe there's a, um, the stimulus you get just from this picking things up from the ground, that are heavy. Can't really replace it with science. Let's go. Oof. Oof. Oh, come on, grab the middle. God damn, let's go. Other hand. All right, let's go. We got these wide presses. Um, range of strength, just did these in one of his stories. Thought it was really cool. Um, haven't done these in a while. We've done these before, but never, uh, never with that little, he did a little curl, curl up action, like a curl into extension. I've always just done like a straight wide press like that. I kind of like this uh, motion of this. So we're coming here, sticking it like this, extending out, coming back in. Ooh. Just like that, hitting that end range of that chest and shoulders. Oh, you wanna get really good at going into these positions. You can train in the gym, right? Under load, progressively loaded. Building shoulders that are in quotations bulletproof, right? None of the bullshit exercises that are out there. Kinda just yapping to get through this set because it's hard. Ooh. All right, that's probably worth mentioning. I'm asked this question a lot. What's my thought on the CSCS? Is it worth getting? And it kind of ties into that exercise because something like the CSCS would technically tell you that exercise is bad, tell you there's not an importance to it. Um, not really looking at the uh, disparity between this whole ass train just coming through, messing up our segments. Um, not really looking at disparity between what they actually say and what we're actually talking about, which is like progressively loaded stimulus um, in a variety of positions. But I think something like the CSCS honestly does a lot of coaches more harm than good because it not only makes them not qualified to do something, right? Having the CSCS does not make you a qualified coach. It does not make you a better coach. It does not even test your understanding of really anything, right? Um, but not only does it not give you the certifications, it does not make you qualified. It gives you a veil to hide behind of, I am a certified coach. I am a certified strength coach. I have these letters behind my name. You have to listen to me. 
And it is a it is a very dangerous trap to fall into because it's almost like this guise of uh, of competency, right? Instead of just proving you're competent, instead of having athletes come up to you and tell you over and over again that your stuff works, um, and, and proving to yourself that you are a competent coach, you go to an outside source of they will tell me I'm competent. And a lot of times the people telling you that you are competent are incompetent themselves. I think it's Gunther Gun Wither on Twitter. If you don't follow him, you absolutely should. Um, he has a, he tweeted about the Peter principle, which is the, everybody rises in hierarchies until they are no longer able to rise. So everybody is stuck at jobs that they suck at or that they have maxed out their abilities. Right. And I think when you looked to external sources for validation, that is who you're getting that validation from, right? People that suck at their jobs, people that have risen through these hierarchies that they've put themselves in, and now they are stuck at the top of this hierarchy that they can no longer rise to, right? Like if you're able to rise above a CSCS, whatever role, you would. You would become the president. You would continue to like rise. You know what I mean? Um, so. I think a lot of people are stuck in these positions and they, they, they have these power over people that are below them in these hierarchies and people really value that power rather than just validating yourself, right? Credentials, getting credentials for yourself. Uh, if you want to know if you're a qualified strength coach, if you want to know if you're a certified strength coach, look at the 30 athletes in front of you. Are they getting results? Do they enjoy training? Um, are they getting more lean? Are they accomplishing their goals? Are they more injury free, right? The athlete's right in front of you. And I think a lot of times when we look to, and a lot of strength coaches do this, they, they look to these external sources, whether it's the CSCS, whether it's other certifications, whether it's other high known coaches, they look to those coaches for advice. They look to those coaches for qualification. Am I a qualified strength coach, daddy? Daddy Boyle, am I a qualified strength coach? Am I a certified strength coach? Do I have letters behind my name? Instead of trying to prove your worth with these letters behind your name, prove your worth with the people right in front of you, right? Do you get results right in front of you? Do, do you have to go search out credentials or can you qualify yourself with people right in front of you? And the, 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 the counterbalance, like, well, it, it weeds out a lot of bullshit. It weeds. No, it doesn't, man. When I was a strength conditioning coach, I, I got offered the job. I got offered my first college strength conditioning job. I guess second college strength conditioning job. My first one, I was like a football strength conditioning, but my first real strength conditioning job at the University of St. Thomas. Um, I, I found out January like 1st that I got the job, right? But I needed to get my CSCS to accept the offer. Um, they were on J term, so we started February 2nd or something along those lines, February 2nd. So I had a month to study, plan, and take the CSCS, right? Bought the book. That day when I found out I got the job, which was in January, bought the book, studied, read the book twice, took a bunch of tests, took the test, I took a bunch of practice tests, took the test itself, and I got three or four questions wrong on the entire test, right? If you look at my spelling on my Instagrams, if you, if you just look at some of my grammar, like you, you can realize right real quick my IQ level. Like it, it's, it's not up there with the geniuses, right? If I can take that test, read the book twice, and, and regurgitate the information they want you to regurgitate. If I can tell daddy the answers he wants to know um, and get three questions wrong on the entire test in a month, that should tell you that test is not weeding out anything, right? It's just weeding out people that can regurgitate information or not. Um, and, and not to mention some of the questions on the test were like how far apart do mirrors have to be? Like when are you ever gonna, that doesn't qualify you as a strength coach, right? So I think a lot of times you were getting advice and you were searching for advice from people that should not be giving you advice, right? And, and I, I made an Instagram post about this a long time ago, but it's like, to get, it, like most people you get advice from are not people you should be getting advice from. Because the people you want advice from are the one percenters of the one percenters, right? They are very, very rare people. The people on every day that, unless you are blessed and you surround yourself with one percenters of one percenters, and it's a hard thing to do. It's a worthy thing to do, but it, it's a hard thing to do. Unless you are really surrounding and actively surrounding yourself with, most of the people giving you advice in life are part of the 99%, right? And that's okay. But they are giving you advice as part of the 99%. They're giving you advice that is not very great advice. Um, they're giving you CSCS-like advice. And I think a lot of times, as strength coaches, if you settle for that CSCS-like advice, you ignore the 1% advice that you can get from these YouTube videos, that you can get from Instagram posts, that you can get from following people like Jake, Will, Angus, Range of Strength, people like that, just geniuses in the field, Rafe Kelly, um, uh, uh, Zweifel, like all these really, really genius strength coaches that go against the grain, right? Instead of 
getting your information from the one percenters of the one percenters. Uh, you settle for the 99% and then you hide behind the veil of that 99%. And it's just super common information getting super common results. Um, and yes, it keeps you away from doing absolutely moronic stuff. Keeps you away from maybe doing like a Seedman program or running a Russian volume program with a, a beginner lifter. But honestly, like, bro, is that our level of competency in our field? Is that how low we, like, little we respect ourselves and respect our colleagues? Like, that should not be our standard, right? And to hide behind that standard is kind of, it's blasphemy. Blasphemy. I can't even say that word, and I passed the CSCS with three questions wrong. That should tell you a lot about our certification. So, it does not make you a certified strength coach. What makes you a certified strength coach is getting results with the people right in front of you, making movement enjoyable for the people in front of you, making people show up and want to show up and get really good results that are right in front of you, right? Um, and a lot of times that's going against a lot of things, the CSCS or uh, Daddy Boyle or all these other big time strength coaches that you're looking up to that part of the 99% will tell you is right. Look for your competency, look for your certifications with the things, with the science experiment that is right in front of you with real life. Stop getting trapped in these kind of fake paragrams of, of, of strength conditioning that we create. If you need to get the CSCS for your job, go and do it, dude. Go and do it. I'm not going to stop you from doing it. If you need it just to say you want it, amazing. Um, but don't use the CSCS as a reason for why people should work with you. Don't use the CSCS for a reason of why you are qualified. The CSCS does not make you qualified. What makes you qualified is getting results with people in front of you, right? All right, let's get to the next one. Keep ripping. This little lap pumper here. I like these from uh, range of strength again. He was pairing these two in his stories. Um, this straight arm, lap pull downs, just like that from over top. Here we got 15 of them total. Um, one thing I wanna mention from that CSCS rant, if you are a young coach and just, just looking for something, man, just to get started um, and do something, like a young coach, like go, go and do it just, just to say you did it, right? Like I'm not saying don't ever go do it. If you're a young strength coach and just need a little direction or just need something to start off with, all, all means, go and do it. Like I'm, I'm not against ever taking it. I think I mentioned that in the original round. I just want to emphasize that point. Like I'm not against ever taking, I'm not against people that have it. I have mine, right? Um, I think I'm against people that use that as their reason that they are qualified to be a strength coach um, and use it to belittle others or put it in their Instagram bios. Um, I think that part is, is kind of stupid. Um, on that note, I was just talking to Joel. We, me and Joel, have a uh, seminar, a conference coming up. So if you want a better certification, yeah, this is gonna be the most sellout thing I ever do. If you want a better uh, certification there. Um, in June, we will have a conference in, I think it's Dayton, Ohio, um, where we will be covering the Red Pill CSCS model. So if you're looking for something as a young strength coach that is a little bit, uh, in my own professional opinion, a little bit deeper thought process than a CSCS, that might be a good conference. But again, don't just do one. Don't just go to the conference and then say you're certified either. That doesn't really help you much in, the, in my kind of thought process. Like, do them both, do a bunch of stuff, take a bunch of search, take a bunch of information from people, and then apply it to what's in front of you, right? That's the whole, that's the whole message. It's not, don't ever take the CS. It's, don't let the CSCS limit you or be stuck in that thought process. And don't let other strength coaches or other people who give you advice keep you stuck in this frame of mind when there's stuff, real life interactions happening in front of you that you should pay way more attention to. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I like that exercise, you should try it out. Then this one is gonna be your second money exercise of the day. I'm giving you two money exercises today. So put the, put the montage above. So we're gonna have this band locking it in above and we're gonna bend to the side, feeling that stretch, leaning in to that band. A ring works as well here. This one is nice and money. Then you come back up, let that band come in front, bring it all the way. Oh, this one feels so good. I can't make this one up. Woo! Oh, anchor point here with that arm. Big weighted side bend there. Really uh, opening up some things you need to open up. Oof, two more. Oof, yeah, that one is a banger of a side bender. We're gonna hit the other side, go from here. Oh, yeah, that one's good. Right lat was a little bit more tight, didn't allow it as much side bending as I would have liked there, but that left side feels like absolute money. All right, we got curls, fingertip push-up holds, 
And what else do we have? Easy bar rows done, kneeling poles done, seated wide press done. Yeah, just buys and uh, fingertip holds, and we're out of here. Let's do it. Then with these biceps, we're going to just meathead curls here, picking it up, grabbing onto something, use the momentum on the way up, just going heavy here. Ripping these up, oof, just like this. Oof. 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 There we go. The other side. Oh, shit. Oof. Oof. Boom. There we go. All right. Fingertip holds, then we're out of here. And we got fingertip holds here. I'm going to bump back just right a little bit here. So, fingertips. Squeezing in this position here. We just got a two minute open palm hold. This one is absolute gas. Um, really big fan of working that, the fingers and the hands. Um, I think they're neglected muscles for the most part. Uh, and I think a lot of times when you have other issues, working some of this stuff, you can find a lot of gold there, um, fixing how the elbows and shoulders feel. So we'll just hold here for a little bit. Ooh, boom. Just like that, man. Yeah, different level. Um, I'd really recommend listening to the Rafe Kelly podcast I had with him a couple of years back um, when he was on mine, not when I was on his. But he really talked about the importance of hand strength and um, where your calluses are and where your strength in the hands are. And I think it makes a really big difference um, for me personally in my philosophies. But yeah, that's a day. Uh, pumped to be back recording YouTube videos after a couple of days off. Um, tomorrow we're going to answer Q and A's. We're going to do another live Q and A. Um, from the questions last Friday, so a couple days ago now. But we'll do Q&A tomorrow. Thursday, Kyle is gonna be back and we're gonna do a snatch video. So he's driving up for, we got a, probably the biggest softball tournament in Minnesota this weekend. So he's coming from with his Florida team. We're not playing together, but he's gonna play with his Florida team. I'm gonna play with my Minnesota team. We will not be playing against each other. They are at a high level um, than us. Their team is unbelievable. They won it last year. Um, so he'll come up, we'll make a snatch video and BP on Thursday together. So that'll be Thursday. We'll figure it probably Wednesday, just a normal video. Tomorrow Q&A. Thursday will be snatches with Kyle. And then Friday, we're going to do, we have Corky's. We have game day on Corky's and uh, some BP with Kyle. So maybe do some uh, BP content Thursday or Friday. We for sure have a snatch technique video coming. I know EV was looking forward to that. So we'll do that on Thursday. And um, yeah, we're just going to keep crushing. I got softball tonight and uh, BP in 30 minutes. So I'm going to drive there and rip. Let's have a great week. Let's do it. Boom.